Chapter 10 Flight of Destiny Aragorn's mind churned as he sped on his way. He ran as fast as he could, refusing to stop even when his breath came in great gasps. As he pounded down the cold road, he cast out with his mind for Safira, but she was too far away for him to contact. He thought about what to say to Garo. There was no choice now. He would have to reveal Safira. He arrived home, panting for air and heart pounding. Garo stood by the barn with the horses. Aragorn hesitated. Should I talk to him now? He won't believe me unless Safira is here. I'd better find her first. He slipped around the farm and into the forest. Safira! He shouted with his thoughts. I come, was the dim reply. Through the words, he sensed her alarm. He waited impatiently, though it was not long before the sound of her wings filled the air. She landed amid a gout of smoke. What happened? she queried. He touched her shoulder and closed his eyes. Calming his mind, he quickly told her what had occurred. When he mentioned the strangers, Safira recoiled. She reared and roared deafeningly, then whipped her tail over his head. He scrambled back in surprise, ducking as her tail hit a snowdrift. Bloodlust and fear emanated from her in great, sickening waves. Fire! Enemies! Death! Murderers! What's wrong? He put all of his strength into the words, but an iron wall surrounded her mind, shielding her thoughts. She let out another roar and gouged the earth with her claws, tearing the frozen ground. Stop it! Garrow, will you? Oaths betrayed! Souls killed! Eggs shattered! Blood everywhere! Murderers! Frantic, he blocked out Safira's emotions and watched her tail. When it flicked past him, he dashed to her side and grabbed her spike on her back. Clutching it, he pulled himself into the small hollow at the base of her neck and held on tightly as she reared again. Enough, Safira! he bellowed. Her stream of thoughts ceased abruptly. He ran a hand over her scales. Everything's going to be all right. She crouched, and her wings rushed upwards. They hung there for an instant, then dove down as she flung herself into the sky. Aragorn yelled as the ground dropped away, and they rose above the trees. Turbulence buffeted him, snatching the breath out of his mouth. Safira ignored his terror and banked toward the spine. Underneath, he glimpsed the farm and the Enora River. His stomach convulsed. He tightened his arms around Safira's neck and concentrated on the scales in front of his nose, trying not to vomit as she continued to climb. When she levelled off, he gained the courage to glance around. The air was so cold that frost accumulated on his eyelashes. They had reached the mountains faster than he thought possible. From the air, the peaks looked like giant, razor-sharp teeth, waiting to slash them to ribbons. Safira wobbled unexpectedly, and Aragorn heaved over her side. He wiped his lips, tasting bile, and buried his head against her neck. We have to go back, he pleaded. The strangers are coming to the farm. Garrow has to be warned. Turn around! There was no answer. He reached for her mind, but was blocked by a barrier roiling fear and anger. Determined to make her turn around, he grimly wormed into her mental armour. He pushed at its weak places, undermined the stronger sections, and fought to make her listen, but to no avail. Soon mountains surrounded them, forming tremendous white walls broken by granite cliffs. Blue glaciers sat between the summits like frozen rivers. Long valleys and ravines opened beneath them. He heard the dismayed screech of birds far below as Sephira soared into view. He saw a herd of woolly goats bounding from ledge to ledge on a rocky bluff. Aragorn was battered by swirling gusts from Safira's wings, and whenever she moved her neck, he was tossed from side to side. She seemed tireless. He was afraid she was going to fly through the night. Finally, as darkness fell, she tilted into a shallow dive. He looked ahead and saw that they were headed for a small clearing in the valley. Safira spiralled down, leisurely drifting over the treetops. She pulled back as the ground neared, filled her wings with air, and landed on her rear legs. Her powerful muscles rippled as they absorbed the shock of impact. She dropped to all fours and skipped a step to keep her balance. Aragorn slid off without waiting for her to fold her wings. As he struck the ground, his knees buckled and his cheeks slammed against the snow. He gasped as excruciating pain seared through his legs, sending tears to his eyes. His muscles 
cramped from clenching for so long, shook violently. He rolled onto his back, shivering, and stretched his limbs as best he could. Then he forced himself to look down. Two large blots darkened his wool pants on the insides of his thighs. He touched the fabric. It was wet. Alarmed, he peeled off the pants and grimaced. The insides of his legs were raw and bloody. The skin was gone, rubbed off by Sophia's hard scales. He gingerly felt the abrasions and winced. Cold bit into him as he pulled the pants back on, and he cried out as they scraped against the sensitive wounds. He tried to stand, but his legs would not support him. The deepening night obscured his surroundings. The shaded mountains were unfamiliar. I'm in the spine. I don't know where, during the middle of winter, with a crazed dragon, unable to walk or find shelter. Night is falling. I have to get back to the farm tomorrow, and the only way to do that is to fly, which I can't endure any more. He took a deep breath. Oh, I wish Safira could breathe fire. He turned his head and saw her next to him, crouched low to the ground. He put her hand on her side and found it trembling. The barrier in her mind was gone. Without it, her fear scorched through him. He clamped down on it and slowly soothed her with gentle images. Why do the strangers frighten you? Murderous, she hissed. Girl is in danger. And you kidnapped me on this ridiculous journey. Are you unable to protect me? She growled deeply and snapped her jaws. Ah, but if you think you can, why run? Death is a poison. He leaned on one elbow and stifled his frustration. Safira, look where we are. The sun is down and your flight has stripped my legs as easily as I would scale a fish. Is that what you wanted? No. Then why did you do it? He demanded. Through his link with Safira, he felt her regret for his pain, but not for her actions. She looked away and refused to answer. The icy temperature deadened Aragorn's legs. Although it lessened the pain, he knew that his condition was not good. He changed tack. I'm going to freeze unless you make me a shelter or hollow so I can stay warm. Even a pile of pine needles and branches would do. She seemed relieved that he had stopped interrogating her. There is no need. I will curl around you and cover you with my wings. The fire inside me will stay the cold. Aragorn let his head and thumped back on the ground. Fine, but scrape the snow off the ground. It will be more comfortable. In answer, Sophia raised a drift with her tail, clearing it with one powerful stroke. She swept over the site again to remove the last few inches of hardened snow. He eyed the exposed dirt with distaste. I can't walk over there. You'll have to help me to it. Her head, larger than his torso, swung over him and came to rest by his side. He stared at her large, sapphire-coloured eyes and wrapped his hands around one of her ivory spikes. She lifted her head and slowly dragged him to the bare spot. Gently, gently. Stars danced in his eyes as he slid over a rock, but he managed to hold on. After he let go, Safira rolled on her side, exposing her warm belly. He huddled against the smooth scales of her underside. Her right wing extended over him and enclosed him in complete darkness, forming a living tent. Almost immediately, the air began to lose its frigidity. He pulled his arms inside his coat and tied the empty sleeves around his neck. For the first time, he noticed that hunger gnawed at his stomach but it did not distract him from his main worry. Could he get back to the farm before the strangers did? And if not, what would happen? Even if I can force myself to ride Safira again, it will be at least mid-afternoon before we get back. The strangers could be there long before that. He closed his eyes and felt a single tear slide down his face. What have I done? <laughs>